Right, morning everyone. Just going to try and do a quick video following on from some of the door protocol stuff we've been doing where you saw me sort of have the dog on the boundary as I walk towards the door, have the dog remain on the boundary as I open the door and just kind of teach the dog, you know, that we just want them to stay in place. Now, one of the problems with visitor protocols is you get all the doggers back chain from visitor coming in all the way probably back to even a car door slamming. So the car door slam may elicit um, a behavior that you don't want. So the next piece of the jigsaw puzzle is to desensitize to all those individual components. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use YouTube and some sound effects that are on YouTube, which is great. Um, if your dog does react, then you must start this on low volume. For the purpose of this, this video, I'm gonna start quite high volume so you can hear it. Rebel tends not to react because I've done all this sort of low level. So you start on say volume 10, and if your dog doesn't react, um, you can reward and then move to volume 20 or whatever the, the volume is, one, two, three, four, five, gradually building up the volume till it's louder. You can also use things like a Bluetooth speaker so you can move the speaker towards the place where the sound may come from, i.e. towards your window or towards your door so it sounds more realistic. So what we're trying to do here is remove that sort of link of sound happens and then that means someone's coming. Because what happens for the dog is they hear that sound of the, the car door slam. That creates arousal. It then creates anticipation because they've linked that to someone arriving. So then they go through anticipation, arousal, excitement. Then if there is somebody that they know, then they'll go into overexcitement. And if it's someone they don't know, they could go into fear. And you get two of the extremes from jumping up all over the visitor to barking, lunging at the visitor that's the effects of having an overexcited dog when a visitor arrives. Now, we're going to do this with no visitors at the door, so we, this isn't about having real visitors. It's pointless trying to train initially with a real visitor. It's too much for your dog to cope with. It's too much um, for their brain to anticipate. They just struggle in that scenario, okay? So we need to break it down to be nice and calm for them and let them learn in a much easier way okay so what do you do when you've got a real visitor you go to management you put the dog outside you put him a couple of rooms away and if it's a short visit probably just leave the dog alone maybe just wander in a couple of times to just check on the dog but don't give them the stress of that situation um, if it's someone who's coming in for a while then maybe just let the dog calm down fully and then bring them in once they've sort of fully calmed down um, and can cope with it. But then when you're ready to train, we set this up as an exercise. So here you can see I've got Rebel in front of me. And let's just say the first noise would be a car door. Remember, we start low volume. Oh, good boy. And then I can reward. So we've had the car door slam. If I do that again. Oh, good boy. So then the next step from that would be walking on, say, the gravel path down towards your door. Now, you don't have to do all these together. You can do the car door slam one day, walking on the gravel the next day, and the doorbell the next day after that. This is all about just teaching each individual component. What a good boy. What a good boy. Now, at each one of those steps, if the dog was to go into a barking frenzy, running around the house, looking out the windows, things like that, all you do is you just wait. You just don't do anything. You just wait for the dog to calm down. Once the dog's back into a sort of nice calm position, you wait a couple of seconds and you can then reward. Good boy. And then you can go, what a good boy, and play again. Okay? So... Each one of those triggers adds kind of stress to the dog and, and sends them up that escalation ladder. The next step would be the doorbell. What a good boy. So again, we reward. Good boy, good boy. And then we can just leave it at that and we can practice through that. So you start on low volume, Gradually build up, you're removing the triggers. Obviously, we talk a lot of, I mean, this is sort of classical conditioning where we're trying to say, right, 
car door slams, you get a reward. Um, gravel path sounds, you get a reward. Doorbell sounds, you get a reward. OK, so keeping the dog calm and reset just allows us to go to the next level. Once we've mastered all the individual pieces, we can then start adding them together. So I might start adding together the doorbell and the boundary game, the doorbell and me walking to the door. But I might not even open the door at this stage. OK, so I might just walk to the door. So again, I'm just teaching the dog that this is OK. So I hope that makes a little bit of sense and we'll do some more videos as we go. But that's desensitization to the noises. Again, get creative, use YouTube, you know, all those little things that we can do to help our dog learn that the door is not a bad thing. OK, hope that helps. Have a great day.